Good morning, everyone. Welcome to your new day. It is Friday, September 21st, 8 o'clock in the East. So we have some new developments. Christine Blasey Ford could testify next week, but it will not be on Monday. In an email obtained by CNN, Ford's lawyer, Deborah Katz, told the Senate Judiciary Committee that she wants to ensure the process is, quote, dignified and does not turn into a media circus. The only deal breaker is that Ford cannot appear at the hearing on Monday. So we're also learning about the terms that Ford's lawyers say their client wants before telling her story to senators, even if the FBI does not investigate her claim that Brett Kavanaugh sexually assaulted her when they were both in high school. Kavanaugh categorically denies that accusation. It is of huge significance that the only holdup is as long as it's not Monday, as long as it's not Monday, it does look as if this will happen, which is hugely significant. President Trump, he has been praised some for his so-called restraint on this subject. That seems to be over. Overnight, he launched an attack on Professor Blasey's credibility using a refrain that is often employed to try to taint sexual assault victims. Why didn't somebody call the FBI 36 years ago? I mean, you could also say, when did this all happen? What's going on? Uh, to take a man like this and be smirched. Now, with that being said, let her have her say, and let's see how it all works out. But I don't think you can delay it any longer. He caught himself at the end there saying, let her have her day. But that part questioning why she didn't come forward 36 years ago, there are many, many reasons that sexual assault victims do not come forward when they are attacked. Again, Brett Kavanaugh does deny this. One more important development, there's this key line of defense for Kavanaugh that appears to be developing. It was someone else who attacked Professor Blasey. We are hearing that a lot. We heard it from a Republican senator. We also heard it from a conservative ally of Kavanaugh in this bizarre detail. And now one of the president's closest advisors, Kellyanne Conway. Overnight, she specifically raised the possibility on CNN that perhaps it was someone else who attacked the professor. Professor Blasey told The Washington Post, no, I know who attacked me. And again, just one more time to be clear, Brett Kavanaugh denies this. Kellyanne Conway will be on New Day in just minutes to discuss all of this. And just not for nothing, we should also say Michael Cohen is now reportedly talking to special counsel Robert Mueller's team in the Russia investigation. All right, joining us now is independent Senator Angus King of Maine. Senator King opposes Kavanaugh's nomination. Senator, thanks so much for being here. As we understand it, you opposed his nomination before these allegations came to light. Why? That, that, that's right. I, I, uh, I issued a statement early last week before any of this uh, broke. I had a, a series of problems. One, uh, I think uh, Brett Kavanaugh, if you study his judicial record, which I did in some depth, uh, has a very narrow view of what uh, the federal government can do to protect its citizens. Health care, environment in particular is one I'm concerned about. But he has a broad view of what states can do to restrict people's personal liberty. Uh, probably the best example is Roe versus Wade. I, I don't know whether he'll vote directly to overturn it. I think he would, uh, but I'm absolutely sure that he will vote to narrow the protections to the point where Roe versus Wade is essentially a hollow shell of a protection for reproductive rights for women across the country. Additionally, it really bothers me, and this rush on this hearing is the other piece, is that we only have 10% of the data, the, the, the documents that he produced when he worked at the White House. If somebody came to CNN, Allison, and said, I want a job, but you can only see 10% of my work product, and by the way, that 10% is being picked out by one of my former employees and an mm -hmm. old buddy of mine, and it's a lifetime job, you can never fire me, you'd laugh at him. I mean, that's ridiculous, and that's exactly where we are today. Well and, I, I, Senator, I'm sorry to you know, interrupt, I'm but I just want to... I'm from Maine. I, I want to know why they aren't showing us these documents. Okay, because what they say, what Republicans say, is that they have produced more documents, the Kavanaugh's people have produced more documents than any other nominee ever. Well, they're talking about raw numbers. This guy has a huge record. That's, that's the problem. The question is, how much of his record are we seeing? Not how many thousand pages, but... And the truth is, we're only seeing about 10% of the documents that he worked on. When Elega, Elena Kagan was nominated for the Supreme Court, the White House produced 99% of his doc, her documents, as opposed to 10% today. So if you, if you do it in, in numbers, it's a lot of documents, but it's, it's still a, a small percentage of, of the work uh, that he did. And that's, that's one of the things that bothers me. The other piece, Allison, that I don't think we ought to ignore is he has expressed in the past a very broad view of presidential power 
even questioning whether a president should be investigated, let alone indicted or subpoenaed, that's, he, he can take that position. That, you know, people can argue about that. But for him to go on to the court with that position, nominated by a president who's under investigation, who might well face a subpoena or some kind of legal process, to me, the obvious answer is, is recusal. He should have announced at his hearing, I won't take part in these, these proceedings. And to, do, to not do so undermines the credibility of the court. I think it's a straight up violation of judicial ethics, which says you're not you're supposed to avoid not only impropriety, but the appearance of impropriety. So you add those things together. I decided I just couldn't uh, I, I just couldn't support his nomination. And we got to remind ourselves this is a lifetime job. There are no do-overs on this. This isn't like a bill we can amend next year or we can repeal. This is a one-and-done vote. I think it's probably one of the most important votes any of us in the Senate will take. It's going to affect the country for 30 years. And yeah. for that reason, I think we have to be exceedingly careful. Senator, did you think that Judge Kavanaugh was honest in the answers that he gave to the committee? Again, the reason I ask is because I've, Dianne Feinstein, one of your Senate colleagues, uh, did not think so. Here's what she says. Brett Kavanaugh used materials stolen from Democratic senators to advance President Bush's judicial nominees. He was asked about this in 2004, 2006, and this week his answers were not true. Well, I, I think he was evasive. I'm not, I'm not a student of that particular incident. The allegation is there was a Republican staffer who stole documents from the Democrats, fed them to the White House. Brett Kavanaugh handled them. The question is, did he know they were stolen? He says he didn't. Uh, I think you can argue about that. But I think throughout his hearing, and I went to a, a significant part of his hearing, even though I'm not on the committee, and the one thing I learned for sure, Allison, is the chairs for the audience aren't as comfortable as the chairs the senators have up at the, hmm. up at the head of the room. But good to know. In, in any case, <laughs> good to know. In any case, he, he really wasn't answering the questions. He would say things like, Roe versus Wade is a precedent. And... Planned Parenthood versus Casey is a precedent on a precedent. Well, that's like saying today's Friday. That's a factual statement, but it doesn't tell you what he thinks, what he would do, uh, what his views are. And I got to tell you, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting to the place where the next time I hear a judicial nominee say, all I'm going to do is call balls and strikes, that's a no vote out of the box. That's just uh, kidding us. Hmm. He's going to have to make a decision, for example, whether an, some state, Arkansas, Texas, whatever, whether their law about abortion is unduly burdensome on the constitutional yeah. right. Deciding whether something's unduly burdensome isn't calling balls and strikes. That's a value judgment call. And I think he was very disingenuous on those questions. So, Senator, given all of that, do you think that your colleagues on the Judiciary Committee should accommodate Christine Blasey Ford's requests, the, the things that that she's given them the list of things that would make her more comfortable testifying? Well, I don't know. I, you know, I'm not going to enter into those negotiations. I don't think it's unreasonable that, that the FBI reopen its background investigation. People are acting like this is something new. They, the, a, a judicial nomination starts with an FBI background investigation. Some new information has come up in the process. Let them take a look at it, interview people, and Maybe they can't do any better than what the information we have now is, but why not do that? The, 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 the question that's looming over this for me is, what's the rush? The, this, the, uh, Antonin Scalia's seat was held open by, for 14 months. Mm. This, we're talking about 10 weeks. And there's this uh, rush to, to, to get through all of these things. And I've got to tell you, it, it makes you wonder, what is it that we're not seeing? So I hope they're going to be able to work this out. It bothered me, though, I've got to tell you, Wednesday night, Mike Davis, the Chairman Grassley's counsel on nominations on the committee, tweeted out, uh, unfazed and determined, we will confirm Brett Kavanaugh. Now, <laughs> you know, do you really believe in the, in the fairness of a process where the counsel to the committee uh, basically has it signed, sealed, and delivered. That really bothered me. Well, that leads us to one of your Demo uh, a Democratic colleagues, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse, who basically has said that even if he's confirmed and if Democrats win the House and or the Senate, that they will begin investigating Judge Kavanaugh. Here is Senator Whitehouse this week. This is such bad practice that even if they were to ram this guy through 
As soon as Democrats get gavels, we're going to want to get to the bottom of this. If the Democrats win back the House and or the Senate, Democrats will investigate what happened, uh, the charges that Professor Ford is laying out, even if that means investigating a Supreme Court justice at the time. I am confident of that. Senator, is that what Americans want? Is that what Americans should be in store for? No, I don't think so. I, I, I think we ought to settle this now. We ought to get to the bottom of the facts. And, and that's, I think you, you, you phrased the question exactly right. Uh, people want uh, a, a system and a process that they can have confidence in. They want a Supreme Court they can have confidence in. And that's why I think it's in Brett Kavanaugh's interest, in the president's interest, in the Republicans' interest to, to slow down, take your time, lay these issues to rest, if indeed that's what will happen, and then you don't have someone going on the court under a cloud. And I think, I think that's why uh, we, we, ought to, we ought to get it right now and not be uh, hypothesizing about what uh, may or may not happen in the future. This, is, this yeah. is the time to complete this investigation, do it in a proper way, look at all the issues, and as you pointed out at the beginning, I determined that I couldn't support this nomination before these allegations, yeah. but these are serious allegations and we ought to try to get to the bottom of them. Senator Angus King, we appreciate your perspective. Thanks so much for being on New Day. Uh, thank you. Coming up.